start the demo with the documentation homepage. And from here, we can navigate to the tutorial. This page kind of gives an introduction of what will be covered and we'll start with setting up the environment. So we're going to use an LXD cloud for this, meaning that all the containers running MongoDB will be LXD containers. And here's some commands to kind of get those set up. And then for the container management system, we'll use Juju. Juju is just, um, like I said, operational lifecycle manager. So it's gonna manage our LXD containers. Um, it's installed using a strictly confined snap. So we just have to quickly manually make this directory. And then we'll get up our controller that'll manage our LXD containers. This command takes a little bit of time. So I've kind of fast forwarded it here, but essentially the job of the controller is to allocate LXD instances and send certain lifestyle life cycle events to the container like start, changing of configs, etc. While the controller's bootstrapping, I'll kind of explain the next step, which is adding our model tutorial. Um, and the model is going to be the space in which we deploy our replica set. So you can see now we've successfully bootstrapped our controller and now we're going to add this model and we get our confirmation that the model's been added. If we want, we can kind of see what does what's in the model. We do juju status, the model is empty, makes sense, we haven't deployed anything. So let's move on to the next step, which is actually deploying MongoDB. So here, um, we're gonna deploy six beta, and this is going to deploy um, MongoDB on our cloud and we can kind of watch that status. We add the flag color, the option color here so we can kind of get an idea. And then I'm just going to kind of fast forward the time here so we don't have to wait for the LXD container to be initialized and allocated. So you can see now our replica is walking through these lifecycle events. It started and it's now active and idle. Um, and so now what we can do is access MongoDB. So this part of the tutorial, we actually access MongoDB via the operator user. Um, I would not recommend doing this in a production environment. Instead, you'll want to create a separate user, which we will talk about later in the tutorial. But for this case, we're going to access the operator user and set up some environment variables to create the URI. Um, so we first get the username, which is operator. And then the password, um, this uses the juju command, um, get password or the juju action, get password. So now we have that password set up and then you need the IP address of your container. So we'll export that IP address. And then the next thing we'll do is our DB name, which is admin because we're accessing the admin database along with the replica set name. The replica set name is just the name of your application. In this case, it's MongoDB. Um, and so now we can kind of combine all of these things together to get our URI um, and that will print it out. And now to access MongoDB, we need to use the MongoDB shell, which is installed in that LXD container. So we'll use the command juju ssh to get in that container. And then we can use the mongosh command like this. Charmed MongoDB is just the name of the snap. So in this case, we're using mongosh from the snap and then entering our URI. And here we can see that we are now using the Mongo shell and that we're connected to the primary replica. So now we can do things like MongoDB commands like show DBs. We can use a database. If we wanted, we could create a user. So this kind of gives a confirmation that the user has been made. Um, yeah, so now we would exit the MongoDB shell and then we're back in the Juju unit. Um, I'll kind of clear the screen here and we can go on to the next step, which is managing units. Um, so in this case, um, we could add, oop, yeah, we have to exit out of the MongoDB unit and now we can add our um, replicas. So in this case, when we did juju add and dash two, we're saying add two units of MongoDB. And in this case, a unit is a replica. So now we went from having a one node replica set to a three node replica set. And we can now see that they're all active and idle. And now we'll connect again using the URI. Um, a fun fact about MongoDB is that you only need one valid IP address to connect. I would say 
typically you should use all three, but for the sake of brevity here, I'll just connect with one. And yeah, we can see we're now connected and we can do a command like RS status. This will show us the replica set status. What, what we can see here is that we have two secondaries and a primary replica and all these other sorts of information like health, heartbeat, et cetera. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how you would add replicas. So now we can exit the MongoDB shell and the MongoDB unit. And if we wanted to remove a replica, we would do the command juju remove unit. And you can see here in juju that the um, units are now executing this code to scale down the replica set. And once that's settled, we can go back into our container to kind of verify it, um, which we'll do again by SSHing into the LXD container and running our same command to connect to the URI. And now when we run RS status, we should see that there's one secondary and one primary instead of two secondaries and one primary. So now we can exit Mongo shell again, exit the Mongo DB unit and kind of clear out the screen again. And then we'll go to managing passwords. So um, we can get our password by running the command get password. Um, that was what we used earlier when we created the MongoDB URI. Um, so you can see here that this will get the password. But if we wanted to, we could also rotate the password to a random password using set password. And you can see here that this now changed the password. Um, and if you do this, it's important that you change your URI because now your password's changed, of course. But we can also set the password to a specific password by passing the password option here. So I'll, I'll just call it my pass here without the dash. Um, and now this should show that, in fact, the password has changed and it's called my pass. And yeah, like I said, you're going to want to update your URI because if you don't, then it will use the old password and you won't be able to get authenticated to your MongoDB deployment. Um, so yeah, now let's talk about relating to the MongoDB deployment. I'm just going to kind of clear the screen. So there's a lot of different relations you can do. In this case, we're going to go over the data integrator charm. This automatically creates users for us along with um, automatically creating databases with our um, desired permissions, um, like do you want admin permissions or read write permissions, etc. So to do this, we'll deploy the data integrator charm and we'll kind of watch that and wait for that to come up. Again, earlier we manually connected to the database using the operator user, which like I said was dangerous, so I'd much rather suggest to do this instead when you want to access your database. So here now you can see we're going to integrate the data integrator charm to our MongoDB deployment and we're going to wait for this to settle for them to all be active and idle. And then we can run this command get credentials. And this is super cool because you don't have to manually create your own URI and find the password and the username and all that stuff. Um, get credentials just automatically does this for you and you can see the URI right there. Um, and so, yeah, let's actually use this URI. Like before, when we wanted to access MongoDB, we will SSH into this LXD container um, with Juju SSH. And then we'll connect using um, the Mongosh command to access the MongoDB shell. And it's important here that we use quotes around the URI due to some of the characters that are in the URI. Bash doesn't really like it. So in this case, we can see that um, the charm automatically created a database for us called test database. And so yeah, let's write in this database. Um, we can create a collection called test collection and verify that it in fact exists. Um, let's see, perfect. And then we can even insert data into this database. So um, let's insert um, jammy jellyfish into the database. Perfect. So we, that it was acknowledged by MongoDB. And now let's just verify that this document was in fact inserted 
by using the mongodb find command. Perfect, so now we can see that jammy jellyfish is in fact in there. So let's exit the mongodb shell and exit um, the LXD container. And now let's remove the user. So mongodb or charm mongodb automatically does this for us. So there's no need for you to actually remove the user. And as it stands now, um, it isn't going to delete your database that you created or your data unless you configure one of the options to do that. And we can see here when we tried to reconnect to the database that our auth failed. And that's because, well, the user no longer exists. We deleted it. So yeah, we can exit um, the unit. And if we wanted to access that database again, we could reintegrate the charm. And what this does is it actually just rotates the password. So this is the suggested way to rotate a password for an external user. So when we do get credentials again, um, we'll see that the password has changed, um, which is why you wouldn't want to just SSH into the container again, because the URI will have changed because of the new password. And so, yeah, let's SSH in and then access the URI with this new password. We can't forget to put the quotes around it, otherwise um, it'll get mad at us. And perfect, we can see we're still connected to the test database and that, it that our data wasn't deleted. And we can verify our data exists. Perfect, Jamie Jellyfish is still in there. So yeah, that's how you would kind of rotate your password or remove and add users. And now let's get onto the next step, which is enabling security. So um, for Charm MongoDB, we enable security using TLS. And for the sake of this um, tutorial, we're gonna use self-signed certificates. Obviously, self-signed certificates should never be used in a production deployment, but um, it's fine for this purposes of, of this tutorial. So um, we can now see that the model has settled, everything is active. And when we integrate MongoDB with a self-signed certificate charm, um, charm MongoDB will automatically start running with these certificates um, and TLS enabled. So we'll kind of wait for that to settle. It takes a little bit of time because when we restart MongoDB with the commands for TLS, um, the Mongo daemon has to be restarted on all units. So what you're seeing now is MongoDB restarting with TLS. It's all active and idle. So like before, we're gonna generate our URI. Um, if you recall earlier, we changed the password. So let's just update our password and regenerate our URI. And now we can go back here and generate our URI. I mean, I guess we could have used the other one there, but this is fine. And so yeah, now we'll export our URI and print it as well. Perfect. And now we can SSH into the MongoDB container. So from here to access MongoDB, we need access to our certificates which are going to be stored here. So if you want to just see those, you can just LS. Um, and then to connect, we're going to need to use sudo with the charmed mongo sh command. And the reason is that these certificate files are in a place that requires root access. So using the URI will also connect with these specific TLS flags. Oh, I sorry, I've made a mistake. Um, I forgot to include the mongo sh command. Um, so yeah, let me just paste that back in. Great. So now we're connected to the replica set here with TLS. We can do a command like show dbs, whatever. And now we exit. And to disable TS, it's just as simple as removing that relation we initially made. Oh, I need to exit out of the um, MongoDB unit. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, um, I need to remove the relation for MongoDB, not MongoDB Kates, because that isn't the name of this deployment. My apologies for the mistype in the tutorial. 
So yeah, now we can see that MongoDB is going to be restarting um, without the certificates and without TLS enabled. So you can kind of see that's executing there with a message saying disabling TLS. And the other term is now restarting with the message disabling TLS. Again, it takes some time because we're restarting the Mongo daemon um, to be running without the TLS flags. And perfect, um, it's still executing, but now it's done. And yeah, that's it. The next step of our tutorial would be environment cleanup. Um, so let me just kind of clear out this screen here and here. Um, so this part of the tutorial will tell you how to clean up your environment and it says how to remove the Juju controller and the snap. But before we do that, I just want to talk about our how to. We covered already managing units, enabling encryption, connecting to the DB with other applications, but there's other tutorials like configuring S3, um, which would be used for backups. So there's an S3 integrator charm where you can configure things like path, region, bucket, and then connect to the charm. And from there, once they're integrated, you can create backups, list backups, um, even restore a backup. Um, or if you wanted, you could perform a cluster migration where you have already have deployed a MongoDB replica set and you've created a backup and then restoring to a different instance of MongoDB with that backup. Um, and then you can also view metrics. There's two ways to do that by querying the metric endpoint, which I'll kind of show quickly. This is um, just done by curling the um, IP address. So let's just copy that here. And so we'll curl one of the IP addresses for the units um, with the port um, for metrics. And we can see all sorts of different metrics here. Um, but I would suggest viewing the metrics with Grafana. I'm not gonna demonstrate that here, but you can read about it in the how-to. So um, you can integrate the charm with Prometheus, Grafana, Loki, Pause, um, which will let you actually view your metrics in a meaningful way. And then the rest of the documentation talks about users, requirements, libraries. And so yeah, now let's finally do this last step of removing Charm MongoDB. So our first step is going to be to, de de to destroy the model. Keep in mind, you're gonna lose um, any data that's on the database. So it's probably best to make a backup here um, and to not destroy with using force because that is going to guarantee that all of your data is going to go away in a messy way with no guarantees. Um, so now we're waiting for that to tear down. We can see that in the notes in the top corner of the terminal. Um, now it's tearing down the cloud environment. Um, and in the bottom, you can see it's now deleted all the machines and the models destroyed. The next step will be to destroy our controller. It's going to kind of confirm with us that we actually do want to destroy our controller, which we do. Um, and now we'll kind of wait for that. The next step will be to remove the Juju snap, and we'll remove that using the purge option. Um, and yeah, you can see that there. And so yeah, the next things that we could look at um, are here, we have other charms to have our high availability best practices. And here is um, places that you could report or give us feedback or contribute. But now I'll show how to use MongoDB on Kate's. Um, so this kind of links us to the GitHub. If you wanted to see similar documentation for what you just saw here, you would click there. And on Charm Hub here, we can see all of the relevant documentation for Charmed MongoDB Kates, um, which it kind of walks you through similarly, introduction, how-to, tutorial, explanations, and reference. Thank you very much.